Have you ever wondered if you're in a toxic relationship, you're hanging out with somebody, the vibes are good, conversation's good, you're into one another, and yet somewhere in the deep pits of your stomach, an anxiety arises and it makes you question yourself. Is this my person? Why do I sometimes feel unhappy here? Do I belong with this person? Why do I feel like we might be toxic? Now I created a formula to help you figure out if you're in a toxic relationship. The reason this was so important for me is because in my 20s, I was watching Sex in the City and it was my dating Bible. And time and time Time again, I found myself in relationships that just weren't right. But why weren't they right? And why was this iconic couple that I was watching on TV, Carrie and Big, also not right and yet displayed to us in media as the couple of the late 90s and early 2000s. Carrie and Big are without a doubt iconic, but they are also without a doubt pretty toxic. Their relationship is decades long and includes infidelity, gaslighting, and attachment styles that are so uncomplimentary they might as well be frenemies. The formula is pretty simple. It consists of two key components. The relationship has more dreaming than reality, more chaos than peace. If your relationship has those two key components, you're probably in a toxic relationship. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. It just means that you're probably so incompatible, you're driving each other a little bit insane. Now, Carrie and Big graced us with their presence in 1998, and I will be forever grateful that I got to witness this relationship play out because it taught me exactly what to avoid in the dating market when I was serious about marriage. From the moment they met, they were iconic. Carrie was leaving an afternoon fling and ran into Big because she spilled the contents of her purse on the New York sidewalk and he, being the gentleman he is, helped her pick it up, setting the tone for a relationship that was going to be spicy and controversial. Carrie and Big do not communicate in that moment. They don't exchange pager numbers, cell phone numbers, addresses, or any way to contact one another. Instead, we're left with a mystery. Who is this person that Carrie and Big both felt they had a moment with? A little bit of the va-va-voom, if you will. Now, of course, as the series progresses, we see that they're going to be this very up and down, back and forth, miscommunicating kind of couple. And it's going to be very entertaining and also kind of disappointing that two people who are over the age of 30 can't communicate. Carrie is 32 years old when the series starts and Big is in his 40s. Have you ever been in love? Absolutely. Both have established careers, both are fabulous in their own ways, and yet communication is just non-existent, leading to what I would call one of the most iconic toxic couples of our lifetime. Are you on a date? I can't believe it. You've seen other women. Six seasons in, two movies, and even a reboot, it's never really clear if Carrie and Big were the love of each other's life, but it was clear that they were gonna try to do somewhat of life together. We decided to get married. <laughs> She just got engaged and she has been going out with the man for 10 years. It was on again and off again and included really horrible moments for both of them where they lacked character and dignity. They let each other on. There was infidelity. There was a lot of miscommunication. And frankly, there was just a lot of immaturity. Immaturity absolutely plays a role in toxicity. It's a level of misunderstanding, a lack of knowing, and also a sort of allowance of bad behavior to occur and reoccur. Now, throughout the series, Carrie and Big do attempt to communicate. It's just not really shown on screen. We're assuming they've had lots of intimate conversations between one another, but we never really get to see them. Instead, what we get to see as an audience is Carrie throwing tantrums and Big sort of soothing them like an exhausted parent who doesn't know what else to do. I'm here. Now, what's going on? I've done the merry-go-round. I've been through the revolving door. I feel like I met somebody I can stand still with for a minute. And don't you want to stand still with me? You drag me out to a park at three in the morning to ask me if I want to stand still with you? Yes. This form of communication is probably a contributing factor into why relationships end up turning toxic. Think about it. You're two grown-ups and yet you communicate like children. You're afraid of rejection to the point where you basically reject yourself, thus creating an issue in the relationship, self-sabotaging, and ended up creating a self-fulfilling cycle. Carrie and Big have so many moments like this where Carrie, instead of communicating with Big, decides to assume he's no longer into her, creating a chaotic moment in the relationship instead of the peace that they should have been seeking together. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Is that you? Oh my God. Oh my God. Why? You might be worse under there. Shut up, shut up. Oh. <laughs> 
I think it's over. I should never have farted. Jesus, Carrie, that's it. I've heard enough about the fart. It's not the fucking fart. I know it's not the fucking fart. I just, I think I'm in love with him and I'm terrified that he's gonna leave me because I'm not perfect. Big, regardless of being 10 years older than Carrie and very successful, has communication issues. He never actually explains his position to Carrie. Instead, he's hoping she'll just go along for the ride until he makes a decision on whether or not he wants to pick her. I need a sign. What, like in those old religious movies, you want a voice from above? You don't have to tell your mother or the whole world. Just, just tell me. Gary, just get in the car, please. I love you, but I can't. So that's it? Why was communication so hard for them? I'm not actually sure, and I don't want to deep dive into their attachment styles, but I would say that there is an issue here because of probably trauma, and so this might play into sort of Carrie's psychology, but just going off of the show alone, I will tell you that Carrie never learns how to be honest. Even in the reboot, Carrie is willing to engage in incredibly bad behavior to get what she wants, even when it violates people's boundaries and consent. To be fair, this is a TV show that's meant to entertain us. Now, of course, within the series, Carrie does actually visit a professional after one of the infamous breakups with Big and after she unloads and trauma dumps onto her friends and it becomes too much, they recommend therapy. Now, did Carrie benefit from this therapy? This leads Carrie into a relationship with one of her fellow patients, played by John Bon Jovi, who after sleeping with women, loses interest in them. You feel trapped in this relationship, don't you? You're like begging for someone to murder you? No, actually, I've never been more in love. This issue with communication doesn't stop. Carrie and Big continue this miscommunication communication style into the movies. And in the first movie, Carrie and Big have the biggest, the worst miscommunication I have ever seen in relationship history. After allegedly 10 years of an on again, off again relationship, Carrie and Big decide to get married. And this marriage is supposed to be small and intimate and ends up becoming a huge event leading to anxiety and panic attacks in Big, which leads to a miscommunication error with Carrie, which leads to them, you guessed it, breaking up. Now, of course, this all could have been a avoided if Big and Carrie ever sat down for a moment in their life and actually communicated. Big didn't want a big wedding. He felt overwhelmed and instead of listening to him, Carrie kept pushing for a dream. A dream wedding where she's the main character on the cover of Vogue instead of the partner to a man who regardless of age has trauma that he has yet to resolve. And ultimately, instead of being there for one another, Carrie and Big constantly choose themselves. Big, instead of owning his anxiety and walking up to Carrie and saying, I have anxiety, decides to leave the wedding altogether because she can't answer her cell phone. Carrie, instead of asking herself why would the love of her life do this to her, assumes the worst and attacks him in public. If this is true love, I don't want it. The toxicity with Big and Carrie also comes from the highs and lows of the chaos. Their communication style was horrible. As an audience member who has watched this series time and time again, I never cease from the exhaustion I feel when Big and Carrie decide instead of communicating, to give in to chaos. I think one of the most frustrating parts about Big and Carrie is that they're supposed to be this iconic love, but this iconic love involved misleading one another, lying to one another, crossing boundaries, and worse, cheating. In Big's former life, he had a wife, and he cheated on that wife. And he, instead of telling Carrie about it, she found out one little detail at a time, which is pretty common in this relationship story of instead of having the conversations, we learn a little bit at a time anything about these two people. There's a moment in the series where Big and Carrie have another breakup. Big ends up getting a job in Paris and without consulting Carrie, decides to take the job. Carrie, feeling rejected and hurt, doesn't understand why he doesn't make room for her in his life. This event isn't even the most toxic part of their relationship. This is just another breakup. Later on in the series, after Big takes that job in Paris, it falls through and he comes back to America. In that time, Carrie and Big could never solidify their relationship. Big wasn't ready to commit. And yet, after he comes back from Paris, Carrie finds out that he did find someone to commit to. It just wasn't her. Carrie is obviously distraught to find out that Big found someone else to marry, and she's quite young and beautiful, but obviously nothing like Carrie, which makes Carrie question herself and wonder about herself. Who am I? Why not me? Why not us? And yet, as an audience member, we're left with the question of, what is this? What's going on? Why would Big do this? We're left just as confused as Carrie, if not more. As the series progresses, Carrie and Big start a fling behind the back of the woman that Big married 
Natasha. Carrie also cheated on Aiden, who I think all viewers agree was one of her best partners throughout the series. He was sweet, loved dogs, made furniture, and treated Carrie with dignity, and she betrayed that. I'm not even sure why Carrie was so distraught at Big cheating on his first wife, which she would go on to be the other woman in his marriage. Ultimately, it was a disappointment, but I think because they're toxic people, the chaos and hype of the passion led them to engaging in lust. It was just disappointing. But of course, Carrie and Big were a messy, toxic, iconic couple of the 90s and 2000s, and their relationship wasn't very different from other iconic TV shows that we had been growing up with. And if we're being honest, I don't think media has been helping us figure out what is a healthy relationship since so many of the couples we admire are also couples that lie to each other and often are too embarrassed to have the real conversations and to simply communicate their needs and wants. So here we are watching this iconic show and Carrie and Big are cheating together. They're that couple. And now Carrie is that kind of woman. And on top of that, spoiler alert, doesn't even end up with them together. Carrie and Big don't end up together after this. It doesn't lead them to a healthy relationship. Carrie goes on to date other people and her and Big become friends. And then it's awkward as the series continues they're on again and off again. The will they, won't they. What are we really rooting for if at the end of the day, this grown up couple can't even figure out how to commit to one another, communicate with one another, or frankly, stick to some sort of moral compass? I'm not even sure if Big and Carrie have any morals. All I know is they do whatever they want when they feel like it, regardless of who they hurt. This is the recipe for a toxic relationship. Big and Carrie lack the communication and overpromise so often that it leads to the same care chaos that keeps them coming back for more because neither of them, I'm pretty confident, would ever feel secure enough in a secure, healthy relationship because it might just feel too stable. One of the questions I got when I found the love of my life and ended up in a healthy relationship were toxic people asking me if I was going to get bored in my healthy relationship. I think that says something about the culture that we're living in in the shift of narrative, which I think comes from the way that we understand and consume media, which is coming to the conclusion that an iconic real relationship is toxic. That if you're really in love, there's gonna be passion and fights. But the truth is, if you're really in love and it's your most compatible partner, then it should be a healthy relationship with little to no miscommunication and only desire to understand each other more. Caring and big never display a desire to understand each other more. At the end of the first season, Carrie doesn't say, am I the one? She says, tell me I'm the one. Big, who can't actually understand anything about his own feelings, says, I need more time. But more time for what? More time to understand his feelings? More time to know if Carrie's the one? More time for what? It's never really clear what they need more time for, except a back and forth that lasts decades. Decades until we get to the reboot. And the reboot is even more confusing than the series itself, because after six seasons of Carrie being on again, off again with Big, in the very first episode of the new series reboot, Big dies. He abandons Carrie in life and it's so confusing. Now, obviously it's not the dream ending we wanted for Big or Carrie, but it is the ending that HBO needed to create so they could keep a show going. Because unlike real life, these are actors playing characters depicted on television, but still, what does this say about how we consume and understand relationships? Is this an iconic relationship or is this just one of those other TV relationships that lead us into thinking toxic relationships are the goal. I will forever be grateful for Big and Carrie giving us an iconic toxic relationship so I could learn what I definitely didn't want in mine. Toxic relationships might feel really good and then they feel really bad and then they feel really good and then they feel really bad. And if this is the kind of relationship you're in, you might wanna use the formula to try to figure out, are you in a toxic relationship? If you're in a healthy relationship, you're in a relationship in which the world is hard and life is hard, but the relationship shouldn't be hard. Marriage isn't hard, but life is. So make sure you pick a teammate that's gonna make it a little bit easier. First of all, well, there are so many goddamn gorgeous women out there in this city. But the thing is this, after a while, you just wanna be with the one that makes you laugh. Yeah, I'm 
sick of reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool.